Hi everyone, welcome to introductory Python tutorials with a focus on image processing related tasks. In the last video, we looked at how we can take a pre-trained VGG16 architecture, pre-trained on ImageNet weights, and use that as a feature extractor to extract features from our input images and train a random forest or gradient boosting algorithm to uh, uh, for segmentation purposes and in this video it's very similar approach but instead of semantic segmentation we are going to design a image classification problem using gradient boosting so most of these should be very much familiar to you if you have watched the last uh, few videos of mine uh, in this channel so let's jump in and the idea is again here we are taking a vgg16 architecture and then supplying an image I mean in this case uh, today's example uses different images but uh, basically uh, supply an image train this network uh, by not the entire deep learning network but only taking features from for example the second layer here and then use those features to train a classifier this can be random forest or gradient boosting and then classify the model uh, I mean save the model and classify your images this is the plan. So let's go ahead and jump to the code and get things started. Okay, and we worked with this data set before when we were learning about classification. This one it has uh, two folders, training and validation. And within training, we have four subdirectories, subfolders, if you want to call them, barn, dog park, landscape, and sunset. And these images I downloaded from Google. I do not own them, so I cannot, I cannot share them with you, but you can download your own images. And each of these, I have about uh, 75, I believe, uh, or 80, uh, about on average 75 images in each of these classes. Not many, but enough for us to learn about classification uh, uh, today. So let's jump back to our code and uh, let's run each line. Again, these are, this is the only one that you're probably uh, not familiar with if you haven't watched my last few videos. From Keras.applications, VGG16, we are importing this model, VGG16 and uh, we'll import that along with the image net weights in a minute. Uh, I'm providing my input uh, directory, basically uh, defining my size as 256 because all of my images are completely different size. I wanna resize every uh, each of those images into 256 while I'm reading. So this part of the code again should be fam very familiar to you. We are using glob to walk through each image in my train directory each image with an extension of JPEG. I'm using OpenCV to read them in color and uh, resize them to 256 and convert our uh, BGR to RGB or RGB to BGR. Just uh, why? Because when we plot them, it looks nice uh, for us to understand. Otherwise, OpenCV uses reads images as BGR. Yeah, this can be BGR to RGB. If that bothers you, I can change it uh, unless uh, it has implications later on. Let's leave that, but this this doesn't matter all it's doing is it's swapping r and b channels and uh, once we read these images i am going to append that to my list of train images and then my train label my label is nothing but my directory name yeah uh, i'll print the label right there so you can see exactly what they are so when i run this it's loading all the images and these are my labels landscape barn dog park and sunset yeah this is how you do your classification right you have uh, many folders with some names and then bunch of images and you assign the name of your directory as your label and then i'm appending those and then appending the images at the end of it when i convert these to numpy arrays i have two numpy arrays one for my images one for my labels and if you just print out the labels shape it's 320 and if you just look at images it should be 320 by 256 by 256 by 3 because each image is that size okay let's do exactly the same for test images except these images are in the validation directory that's the only difference and if you look at what are the unique values for my train labels you know that my labels are barn dog park landscape and sunset but these don't work right i mean for our for our training we need to convert them into 0 1 2 3 that's exactly what we do here. Encode the labels by using uh, pre-processing. In pre-processing, uh, scikit-learn pre-processing, you have label encoder. This encodes labels into integers, so 0, 1, 2, 3. So we are fitting it, 
and then encoding the test labels and train labels. That's it. So let's run this. And now let's go ahead and print the unique labels. You see how now we have 0, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, so far, so good. Again, we have covered this many, many times in the past, but uh, for those first timers here. Uh, let's go ahead and split into X train. Uh, let's see, yeah, so far we have test images and test labels. Uh, train images and train labels. This step, okay, I thought I was splitting these into 10% and 20%. All I'm trying to do here is assign my train images into an appropriate, uh, uh, appropriate variable that's easy for us to understand. So I'm assigning that to X train. Train image, train labels encoded, Y train, yeah? X test is this and Y test is that, that's it. So let's do that. And I'm normalizing my uh, image pixel values by dividing them by 255. So go ahead and do that. And this part, again, we have done this in the last video. We are importing VGG16 with image net weights without the dense layers and uh, designed for a shape of 256 by 256 by three and make all the layers non-trainable so when you print the summary, it should give you all the information. Maybe it downloads the image net weights first and then printing the summary, 256 by 256 by three and trainable parameters zero, not many. Okay, so now let's define our feature extractor, which is uh, our uh, VGG model.predict extrain. Yeah, we are extracting features right here Remember, in the previous video for semantic segmentation, we took this VGG model and we extracted features up to block one, conv two, up to that point. Here, I'm just using the entire thing all the way to down here. So when I extract features, my features would be of size eight by eight by 512. I mean, you can cut it at any point if you want. If you don't want the entire thing, you can say block three, pool one, or uh, block uh, four, con one, go ahead and stop it, it doesn't matter. This time we are using the entire thing, VCG model dot predict, X train. When I do dot predict, it's just applying the weights, multiplying it with my X train, and then giving me the features. And then I am reshaping them into one dimensional vector because that's what goes into my random forest or uh, XGBoost. So X for training should have a shape of how many of our pixels by 512, right? So that's what the shape is supposed to be. So now let's go ahead and uh, right now it's extracting the features and then we can go ahead and apply the XGBoost. While it's extracting the features, let's cover the uh, gradient boosting part. The gradient boosting here, again, we covered this in the last video import XGBoost as XGB. And within XGB, you have XGB classifier, you have regressor, you have many things. In this case, we just need the classifier. And do not forget to include tree method equal to GPU histogram and GPU ID equal hist, and I don't know if hist stands for histogram, but uh, GPU hist and uh, GPU ID equals to zero. So this tells that, okay, we are going to use GPU and then model.fit, fit on what? X for training, right? This is done. Let's go ahead and look at x for training dot shape. So this has a size of 320 by 32768 at the end of this. Yeah, that's what the shape of this uh, these features are, which is okay, doesn't matter. That goes into right there and then it fits to what? Fits to my Y train. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's fit this and see how fast this actually gets done. Uh, I'll keep a track of, I'll keep the track of time. I'll pause this video and uh, continue this as soon as uh, the training is done. Okay, that was pretty quick. In fact, as soon as I say, this took probably about 20 seconds or so to train on this uh, data, which is great. Uh, not that I have a lot of data anyway, that's why I'm doing the training live. So once we do model.fit, the next step is to predict on our X test. Yeah, so my VGG model, that's what we called it, uh, dot predict, right? So just a second, let's not confuse things here. So VGG model dot predict gives us the features. So let's come back down. 
this is my features from the test data set vcg model dot predict on my test data set this gives us the features and then we are converting the features into whatever the shape that we need for it to go into the model dot predict so let's go ahead and get our features extracted and once the features are extracted we are going to do model dot predict because when we extract the features it, it gets our image into the right shape or data into the right shape so let's do the prediction and after the prediction i'm going to do inverse transform so my prediction is not just zero one two or three but it is dog or whatever that you know dog park or sunset or whatever that value is so there you go and let's look at the accuracy between our test labels and the prediction accuracy is 90 percent extremely good and let's do a heat map to see how we are doing. Apparently we are doing bad on this class, but all other classes are amazing, amazingly well. So let's see, let's do a few predictions from our uh, test images. Again, uh, when I do predictions, what are we doing? Here we are taking an input image, we are expanding the dimensions and we are applying our VGG model.predict, which gives us the features, right? That's why I'm calling these features. And then we are reshaping the features on this random image we just loaded. And then we are doing the prediction, inverse transform, and that's what we are printing. So whatever you're doing here, we have done that for the training images. So we're just following the same path. Okay, so the prediction here is dog park. Dog. That's easy. There are two dogs there. Let's check something else. <coughs> barn, barn. I want to see where it is getting it wrong. Dog park. It's just loading the same images. I am loading random images right there. Again, that looks like a barn, a painting of a barn. That is a sunset. It's doing a pretty good job. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to find. Yeah, so this it says it's a barn, but it the actual label is dog park. And there is something that looks like a barn in the background. So I'm not surprised that this actually did a bad job on that image. Dog park, again, uh, barn, you're getting the same images. Again, we can do this all day, but I hope, uh, I hope, uh, you got, uh, let's do one more, sorry, landscape. Yeah, sure. So you got this idea. So the here, the key point is using your pre-trained or any pre-trained model as feature extractors, right there, we are extracting features, and then supplying the features to train a model, obviously to also predict, you know, once you train it. I hope you found this video to be again useful, informative. If you wonder why this, if I can do deep learning, well, try deep learning. And if deep learning works great on even limited data, go ahead and use deep learning. This is again, uh, more of a educational exercise, but also a bit of a useful information here. If you really would like to use your trained model as feature extractor so you can do something else, now you know how to do that. Thank you very much and like this video if you really think this is informative and please do subscribe to this channel. Thank you.